So guys, I uh, received an email from Wrench in 1957. You uh, will know him from our channel if you dive into the comment section. Um, sometimes then you will know him from lengthy comments where he oftentimes like uh, completes or gives more information to the subject that I'm talking about. So it's always nice to, to read him and he sent me an email that um, he was served with a uh, suggested video by YouTube of the channel of our friend Piano Pad. So I'm not going to read the entire wrench and wrench is like has a beautiful <laughs> digital pen. We're just going to quote a few passages. You can read it. Go just on uh, Wim Winter's double beat conspiracy theory. I mean, really. Piano Pad, by definition, conspiracy theory, a belief that some secret but influential organization is responsible for an event or phenomenon. This is YouTube, uh, and although, although I support your holding a different opinion, I take umbrage with your inferred insult, which in fact it is. I do not belong to any secret organization, powerful or not, not a flat earther, an inference I might resent as a personal affront. Or should I more accurately write, I would be insulted, however, such things only carry, carry weight when an insult originates from people you respect. Wim Winters does not hide any of his examples, is in the process of writing a book on the subject with citations and examples. So this goes on like questioning just the video and the statement that he made in the, in the title. This is what we are doing, cannot be a conspiracy theory, but then his answer is just too good not to share. Dear Wrench in 1957, I will be brief in my reply. The hallmark of, hallmark of conspiracy theories are the elaboration of an alternative reality based on the distortion and the cherry picking of the available evidence, together with a strong feeling of being persecuted by the mainstream, who is generally regarded as unwilling to face with the claims of the conspiracy theorists because it would be too damaging for the conservative establishment. Wim Winters and his double B theory bears all the marks of this. The theory has been debunked numerous, numerous times on YouTube, on Facebook, before YouTube, in the historical research group of which he used to be to belong. He has been factually proven wrong countless times and never bothered to listen, but just go blundering on. So at this stage, when I made this video, I wasn't, I wasn't inclined to be polite about, because he is actively deceiving people, and I think it's wrong. Having said which I've long moved, having said that, which... Having said which, I've long moved on from this topic, which no longer interests me, though it has given me an interest for historical metronomarchs. So in that sense, it wasn't a waste of my time. I mean, do I have to comment on this? I was debunked on YouTube and on Facebook. With what point? I'm yelling in the microphone again. Wim Winters, we know he was debunked for so many times on YouTube, on Facebook, and where is the peer reviewed article? Mr. Pianopat, can you say which point was debunked and why? Can you give me some context? Can you give Mr. Wenchen some context? No, 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 I've, I, this is behind me. I've made my points. I, it's, it's amused me. I mean, this proves my point. What do I have to fear? Go ahead and make some 50 videos on durations. I'll come with my duration series. You're not going to like it. Because guess what? You cannot talk about durations. It's complex. Everything in historical research is complex. What these people do is just they project their own intention and uh, own taste and own view of today on a situation that they hope to be the same 150 and 200 years ago. I really like what he is saying there about the conspiracy theories. 
It's an elaboration of an alternative reality based on the distortion and the cherry picking of the available evidence. Who is cherry picking here? Guys, we have recorded the 32 sonatas of Beethoven in Holbeat. We have recorded eight out of the nine symphonies of Beethoven are in the preparation for the ninth. Alberto recorded all the etudes by Chopin, the scherzi, the ballades, the preludes in Holbeat. I mean, we're going to continue. Um, I bring sources on the channel. Yeah, but you don't present the entire source. What shall I do? If I find something in a book of 800 pages published in 1839, read you the, the entire 800 pages? That's how researchers work? No, you quote from it. And even in my case, it's on the screen. I once saw a video of someone, I cannot remember who it was. It was one of those illustrious channels. I mean, what a, what a great time. Where... The same point was made that was, was I was cherry picking, I was cutting off all the uh, sources and then he was making the point for that while just pulling up a video of me where the entire source was shown. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But we live in the Google days, you know, there's links in the description box and you can go on Google to check everything. And if I missed something, you go there and you make your own story out of that. You, you know what happened when I made the 1808 video, you know, the, the video on the durations, that's actually everything on durations that you should know is in that video. That's the most important source perhaps we have. And even that's the 1808 Beethoven concert, um, the famous one, December concert, so December 22nd, I believe, 1808. Yeah, but that's, that's deep proof against Holbeat. Well, I worked three weeks on that script alone because I calculated everything, went over that, studied, saw the different perspectives, went deep into this in single beat territory, in whole beat territory, studied about concert practices in those days, learned what an academia concert was, and so on and so on. And at the end, there was no way, no way you could connect the dots in a single beat universe. And still people are saying today like, yeah, that concert would be eight hours. No, that concert in single beat, Beethoven would be missing two symphonies of the size of the sixth. Unless you say like people were drinking coffee with each other for more than one and a half hour in temperatures that are, temperatures that are around six degrees. It's not very likely. That's what I mean by doing research. You cannot say gen generically like this guy is wrong about everything. Who is cherry picking? What happened when I published that video, and actually Alberto, Alberto predicted that, I had high expectations. That was, a, that was the time where we had 350 people waiting in the premiere because I made a response video to, uh, to Lizitza, just put, putting up my sunglasses. And, you know, in that time, for what reason, I don't know, people were comparing me with Tom Cruise. Um, my wife was flattered. I don't know if I was so much. Um, I know I'm taller than the guy. It, um, for one thing, I mean, yeah, let's not, not, not go into detail, shall we? But I played that Tom Cruise card and people just liked it. And then a few weeks later, I came with the 1808, 1808 duration source, which was actually meant to be the first big video on durations. But Alberto said to me, people are not interested in this. And it was true. We had 40 people in the premiere, 10 times less for a video that I worked on for three weeks. Well, what happened is, it was at that moment that Mr. Pianopat lost his interest because all the channels went silent and some of them were deleted. A lot of videos were, pu were, were pulled down because it was game over already there. And I'm sorry to talk and to sp use here like sports terms, like game over, but what do you expect me to do? I mean, I'm willing to go into interaction with everybody. We have a podcast now. And people will send be sent invitations when we are a little bit more like on ease here. Uh, I also want to do that with Alberto together. It works well, the, the synergy between us here. And then you come on the podcast and we talk. It's not about right and wrong or pointing right and wrong to each other. What Pianopat does all the time. It's, 
even here, even though he left everything behind, still he needs to point finger to the conspiracy theories, um, theorist. But we, there is only one historical truth. So if you have two opposed opinions or interpretations in the metronome world, only one of them is correct. That's the problem we have to face. That's why people are sometimes freaking out. We have no compromise margins. It's a mathematical frequency per minute. You can play it or you cannot. And that's the most, how do you say that? The best way to visualize the problem is playability. It's not the most important explanation. But it's what people understand. And so in the world of metronome marks, you cannot say like, yeah, I can do it when I, when you give me 25%. Yeah, but then I want 20% as well. It's not like, like in the ornamentation world, there are big fights, long apparatura, short apparatura. Okay, but at the end, it changes the music quite a lot actually here. But I mean, yeah, temperament's the same thing. Uh, some people want to have a little bit more advanced tuning temperament. Some people want to have a little bit more, you know, tension in the temperament. But I mean, you you can use either of, of them and just play the same piece of music. But in, in metronome, you, I mean, we don't have anything to give. So when people say you're dogmatic, actually what they're saying, what they're saying is like, you, you don't compromise with us, with our taste. Well, we have no, how can you with the metronome mark? But claiming or pointing your finger at me and say like, he's not um, sticking to the facts. I mean, what is there in musical, in the musical world? What is more factual than a metronome mark? And if Piano Pat wants to follow wants us to follow him with all his recordings in the future, because I see he's now has a lot of interest in metronome marks, happy to see how many times he sticks to them. And then of course the story will come, yeah, but that's not what metronome marks are for. I'm an artist, like I'm a, I'm a co-creator. You have some beautiful sources of the 19th century, what people in the 19th century actually really thought about those virtuosos that considered themselves to be co-creators. It's something of our time. We live in the, in the in the pinnacle of the age of enlightenment. Here is the individual, individual, you know, the individual, I would say, individual is Dutch. I am the individual, I'm, an, I'm entitled to take that Beethoven sonata and make it my own. Actually, I'm required to do that. I have to interpret, I have to put my stamp on the music. Is there anything wrong with that? Hell no, that's our time. Was there anything wrong for Beethoven? That's the question we try to answer. And the only thing you can say is hell yes. Czerny was like, Beethoven apologized for having humiliated Czerny after public concert. I don't remember exactly the date, but it was not that late, 7, 18, 18 or something, where, Be where actually, if you read the passage very carefully, the only thing that Czerny did was adding a few ornaments. Was enough for Beethoven to yell at him publicly so much that you realize later like yeah i mean it's journey for god's sake it's my best student and my friend so i should apologize and so we think today beethoven would be fine but i'm digressing if we here don't stick to the facts that i then i don't know any i don't know anymore what sticking to the facts is and the conspiracy theory is something that emerges when people purposely or unconsciously leave out facts and then create a new reality that just falls apart whenever you apply the facts to that. Well, the WBMP is something that holds its ground, always. There is nothing there. Just like I said, I'm in a fortress, please. I don't even hear you shooting, would like to. Challenge me, but really challenge me, not by shouting and by like, like, like throwing terms like conspiracy theorists at me. I mean, it doesn't work, eh? But the single beat side, the piano pad side, where is his recording of the Opus 299? I know he's freaking out. Many, few people will, will know that we had Zoom meetings, eh? 
where he was sitting at the piano and I really asked him like, play it. And he said, it's not fair. I say, what's not fair? Yeah. With your theory, you can play everything. I cannot demonstrate that. He said, yeah. Do you realize what you're saying right now? When you're not able to demonstrate the end of the story, that's the whole point. Anyways, happy to hear from him. We miss him. Bring some other videos, my dear friend Patrick. We have a new format here. Oh, what can I say? I really would like people to come on the podcast and not to fight. I mean, if you want to fight with me, I'm all in. Huh? I mean, I'm here. I didn't choose for this position, but if I was about, I was, if I was, I was ever to play Beethoven sonatas in this way, I had to make my case, and you see now why. So I will stand my ground. I will defend this. If people attack me. I can shoot back. But I'm way more interested in taking this microphone and talking to someone who says, I see it differently and here's why. And from this conversation, when you have two people or three people with Alberto, there you can have a conversation that goes much deeper than you're a conspiracy theorist. I mean, just by comparing the two sides, you know, the two possibilities during what this piano pad did are just coming on board here, talk. And you see the difference of level and I definitely want the latter. But if I have to shoot, I mean, I shoot. Thanks for watching. See you soon again.